So let me know if this sounds familiar to you because it's something that is very familiar to me. You're, it's late at night, you're, you're binging YouTube on your phone, you can't sleep, and you have that project idea in the back of your head. You've been mulling it over for a while, and you know what? You're finally gonna go ahead and do that, that project thing you wanna do. So you start looking up some videos online to get inspired, and you come across a YouTube channel. And the hosts are great and entertaining. They've got chemistry, the editing's not bad, the production values are pretty good, and this is it. You're finally Finally gonna get inspired to do this project and then they start building it in their thousand foot fully kitted out garage and they're using their $15,000 Miller welder to put this all together and they've got a hoist and a jig and a crane and air compressors and production crew and you have none of that you have a miter saw you've got some wrenches some allen keys you've got a 3d printer those more people are starting to get but you don't have the room or the heavy tools to do a, a camper conversion or electrify a K truck or any of that. You, you've got your garage. And in my case here, I don't even have most of that. What can we do? What kind of project can somebody do using just off the shelf parts, basic tools, and let's say as much room as I have on my desk here. How about something Moto? But before we get too far, I do want to take a quick moment to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. Okay, so I got to let you in on this little secret, okay? I just learned about this, but you got, you got to keep it secret, okay? So you're working on a project and you, you got to print something, but your 3D printer, it, it, it's not going to cut it. It's a piece of junk. And you you don't have a CNC machine, but that, that bracket, it needs to be made out of aluminum and it's got to be machined. And you, you don't have a CNC. And to make it all work, you, you need a custom PCB. Well, guess what? You actually have the ability to do that all already at home. I know it's surprising and guess what? You only need one machine for it. It's called your computer with an internet connection to PCBWay.com. That's right, PCBWay is your one-stop shop to everything you need for your custom project. Need some brackets CNC'd, custom PCBs whipped up, or hey, you need something printed in uh, SLS nylon? Well, guess what? PCB Way has got you covered. Check them out at the link in the video description and thank you for sponsoring today's video. So quick primer here, just to get your brain in the right place for what I'm trying to go after here. I am involved with Voron Design. Voron Design is a design group where we design 3D printers called Vorons. And part of the main design goal of a Voron Design printer is that the fact that you can build the printer using commercial off-the-shelf components, using basic tools, wire strippers, soldering iron, Allen keys, and everything that you need to build this thing, you can hit up uh, Amazon or AliExpress to get the parts you need. Nothing requiring a fabrication shop or nothing requiring custom machine components, for example. So we're gonna take that kind of design ethos and we're gonna try and do something that I've been wanting to do for a little bit now. We are gonna build a DIY at home electric moto compo. So you may be asking, what even is a moto compo? So I'll put some fancy B-roll up on the screen here, but a moto compo, it's a, it's a Honda, little motorcycle it, it, they sold it in one of their k cars it was an add-on i believe an extra and it was a little motorcycle that would fit in the boot of your little honda car and you would you would drive into the city you would park it then you would take your moto comp out and you would ride that for the last little bit of the journey and it was a cool little niche thing uh, they haven't made them in years they're collector's items now and they're really actually probably not that great from most of the videos i've seen they're kind of it's a cheap gas bike what do you expect but Honda recently re-released it as an updated version, the Moto Compacto, which is an electrified version of it. And I actually got a chance to ride a slightly modified version of one at OpenSoft earlier this year. And they're fun. But unfortunately, they're also $1,000 US and they're only available in the US. I'm in Canada eh? and I, I, can't, I couldn't buy one if I wanted to. So at the end of the day though, it's an electric motor, some batteries, frame, and some wheels. How hard could it be to build one? Well, let's uh, bust out the CAD and start working on that idea. Okay, so let's get to work here. So the basic idea is we've got two wheels. So we've got a rear wheel and a front wheel. And the front wheel is gonna be our steering wheel. And I'll probably put the brake on the front and our rear wheel will be our drive wheel. Uh, this way we can do sick burnouts. So anyways, 
I'm trying to keep this design as simple as possible. Again, no crazy tools. So we're just gonna go with what I'm gonna call the two rectangle approach. Uh, we're gonna have a lower subframe of some sort. We'll have electronics and all the other stuff to make it move here. And then we're gonna have an upper rectangle part of the frame of some sort. Uh, and we'll have a, a steering column of some sort to make this turn. We'll have some storage in here. The handlebars and our seat are gonna be folding down so that this can compact a bit more. And um, yeah, that that's that's what we're gonna build. That's, that's totally best design in the world. Uh, the cat is now complete. Let's start actually building this thing. This is all we need to do to get started. So uh, wish me luck. So we got the rough idea of what we're doing, but unfortunately to make that rough idea into a reality, we need to actually start designing and assembling this. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm not one of those types that I could just cat everything up and then go and build it. I kind of have to design as I go. It's just the way my brain works. And also considering we're using a bunch of parts that we're getting as we build this and we're using leftovers and whatnot, there's really no structure. So we're just gonna, you know, as, as a, a poet once said, YOLO it and yeah, off we go. So first things first, we need something to actually reference. What do I mean by that? Well, we've got the, we got the rough idea. We're building a DIY electric moto compo-esque scooter, but what, where do we start designing from? We, we need, we can't just start making dimensions up without a reference point. And I think what we're gonna use for that is the electric motor itself, what actually drives us. So the original plan was to use a standalone electric motor, have a drive wheel, and then have it belted or chained together. Unfortunately, that gets a little complicated. There's multiple components involved, keeping everything accurate, dimensional, lined up, blah, 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 blah. Why don't we just take all that and throw it out and just use an all-in-one electric hub motor? So this right here is an electric hub motor. All I know about it is it's 48 volts, it's 500 watts, 10 inch wide, and um, that's about it. Uh, shout out to Jason from LDO Motors for providing this. I, I reached out to Jason when I was starting this uh, concept for this project up and uh, I figured, hey, we've worked together on the past. LDO Motors do great Voron kits and other 3D printer kits and whatnot. And I figured, hey, they got motors in the name of the company. Maybe they know somebody. And unfortunately, they don't actually make these motors. Uh, but he asked around and he found this and he got it sent over to me. So thank you, Jason. So there we go. This is our electric drive motor. So now that we have this, we just need to figure out how to make the frame around it and how to attach this to the frame. Also, what are we gonna use as the frame? And for that, I'm gonna ponder you a question. So if I buy a clapped out Ender 3 and I strip all the parts out of it and I reuse some of those parts and build a new printer, such as a Core XY, a lot of people will call that a Ender conversion. Um, or if I take my Ender and turn it into a Voron switch wire, an Ender wire, that's an Ender conversion. So if, if I source a Sane Smart, I believe it was a Sane Smart, CR30 clone, and I take all the extrusions from that and turn that into a uh, electric bike, does that also count as an Ender conversion? I don't know, think on it. But yeah, that's what we're gonna be using for the frame of this build. We're gonna be using repurposed 2040 aluminum extrusions. They're lightweight, they're easy to work with. You can cut them with a miter saw with carbide teeth really easily. I used mine that I use for cutting wood on this. Uh, you can tap the ends, you can mount stuff to them everywhere. These are probably gonna be a great thing to use. At least I'm hoping they are. So the problem is, how do I actually attach this to this? And no, I'm not just gonna drill a hole through this and bolt it through it. Would it work? No, okay, it wouldn't work. Um, so we're gonna have to like somehow figure that out. So let's let's start with that. So I've gone ahead, I've got all my dimensions and everything. I've measured this all up and basically how this works, this has a axle that goes through it. Uh, it's 12 millimeter bolt. It's got two flats on it that make it 10 millimeters wide. We have a lock nut. We also have this washer here uh, with a anti-rotation feature. So this washer will go on like that. We'll put something in the middle and then we'll squish it on with the lock nut. So we have our extrusion here. And what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of the fact that the ends of the extrusions are tapped and we're gonna put some M5 bolts in the end here. And that way, when we design our printed part to go around this, we're gonna have essentially some uh, 
five millimeter rebar reinforcing that. So that, that should add a little bit of strength there to the end. So that'll hold the plastic part on there. We'll envelop this, we'll have that goes on there, this goes under there. So we're gonna design a plastic part that kind of works like that, I guess. And this is what we have here. So I'm very not good at CAD, so hopefully this is good enough, but this is what we got here. It holds on to the end of the extrusion. Uh, we have the anti-rotation there, room for the nut and the flange. We got our bolts that go through the part there, and I've also thrown in some cross beams here. So let's go ahead and make this printed part a reality. And also, fun little tip here, uh, if you don't want to have to export stuff from Fusion 360 to print it, 3D print it, uh, just use right click, save as mesh, and then you can save it as an STL file right from Fusion 360. You don't need to go and export it and all that. You can just make an STL right from your design in Fusion 360. So let's go print it. And after a short print, this is what we have here. Now, when it comes to choosing the material for this, a couple considerations. One, this is an electric motor. It will be outside. This generates heat. It is hot outside. Ergo, we're not gonna use PLA. PLA is probably gonna be a bad idea for this. So instead, because I also like the idea of projects that anyone can do, I'm not gonna go with some fancy Gucci material like glass fiber reinforced peak or something like that. This is just straight up carbon fiber PETG. Now, granted, I did print it on the Pantheon Design HS3. You don't need a Pantheon Design HS3 to print PETG CF, but I had it anyway, so I figure why not? So yeah, so if all goes well now, we put that washer on there, this will go on like that, and then we put our nut there, and then the extrusion would go in there. So I think we're ready to finally start putting something together here, and this will be probably one of the more critical aspects because if this printed bracket can't support my weight, we're dead in the water. So this is also something we're gonna have to do as we do this, we're gonna have to test it as we go. So we're gonna have to build it as we go, design it as we go and test it as we go, because we really don't wanna get to the end of the line and have everything fall apart on us. So let's start drilling and building. So there we go, that is the rear axle and subframe, I guess you would call it, of the DIY Electric Moto Compo. And now we can actually go ahead and see if this is actually a functional, viable design and if these printed motor mounts or axle mounts or hub mounts or if these printed parts here don't fail when I put my fat butt on it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. But by the way, just for your, your reference, uh, the 
cross beams here. These are currently just blind joints, um, which I'll probably end up swapping out to a full on cross bolt uh, that bolts through the extrusion into this cross extrusion here, instead of it just being held on by the head of the uh, bolt there and the, uh, the little thin piece of aluminum there. I just went with uh, blind joints for now just because they're quick and easy to do. And I'll probably swap them out to something more robust uh, further in the build series. But for now, again, if this doesn't hold my weight, we're not going any further. So let's check it. Okay, uh, say hello to messy floor cam. Woo. Uh, obviously we don't have a front here. So this is just a uh, box of filament. So hopefully this holds up. So I am gonna hold on to stuff just to make sure I don't fall over but I'm gonna put my whole weight on here, roughly center, and uh, bounce a bit. So for reference, on a good day, I weigh 180 pounds. So if I put some weight on this, I'm bouncing. I am, I am bouncing. I don't know if it's seen on camera. I am bouncing on this, and I think I'm doing more damage to the box of filament than the printed motor mount. So I, I think this will work. I, I, I think this will work. I, th I think we're in a good spot. That that seems to work. Hey, they didn't break. Huzzah. So there we go. This is actually looking um, somewhat viable. This, I, this might not be a crazy sketch on a napkin uh, for long, hopefully. So yeah, this is the subframe. It seems to hold my weight. Um, it should work. Um, now we gotta move on to the next part, which is the, the next part. Um, again, we're designing this as we go. And I think the next critical component I'm gonna have to figure out is the front wheel portion, because that's going to, it's gonna dictate how high the, the next rectangle portion will be. Uh, we need to figure out how much clearance we need for that front wheel so we can turn. I'm trying to keep it this narrow. I don't wanna go wider than this. so. I got to figure out what size wheel to use for the front. I need to figure out how to attach brakes to it. We need to figure out how to make it actually attach to handlebars and turn this thing. And then of course, we still have to figure out how to deliver power to this. So again, this is 48 volts, 500 watts. I need to figure out batteries. I would like to use some sort of battery solution that it uses off the shelf batteries. I don't want to be making my own battery pack. Lithium ions can be dangerous enough as is. Um, something like drill batteries or something along those lines. I wanna use an off the shelf battery pack. Those are usually safer too. Uh, we need to figure out how to actually drive the motor. So we're gonna need a, uh, a brushless driver of some sort. I think they make some already for uh, electric scooters. I'll have to do some Amazon searching. Also, these aren't just me doing engagement bait questions to the audience. I'm, I'm actually asking you. So if, if you've got input on this, please leave comments below. I'm learning this as I go and any insight would be appreciated. Uh, but yeah, this is the, I think this is a good start to this project. Again, updates for it will come out as they come out. I would like to get this done in the nearish future, but it'll be kind of like order a part, wait for it to come in, design it, mount it. Okay, this works, this doesn't work. Okay, order the next part type thing. So no rush on it, but it'll get done when it gets done. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on this build series and others. If you wanna help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, check out those links in the video description. Some of them are affiliate links, don't cost you anything extra, go a long way in supporting the channel. And again, I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator and uh, Zoom Zoom? Yeah, we'll go with Zoom Zoom. Zoom Zoom. Get back.